Today we're talking about the new Animal Crossing game. Now keep in mind two things. First, I've only had the game for about a week, week and a half, and this footage is captured through the 30 second capture method because I don't have a capture card. Nevertheless, we are here. My philosophy for game reviews is to try to recreate what it's like to play the game because the only way to truly experience a game is to play it, so the gameplay reflects what a player will experience on their first week on the island. Let's get into the game now, shall we? This is also my first Animal Crossing game, so as a newcomer, it is fantastic. Anyways, Animal Crossing has always been a series where you can just do whatever you want in a welcoming and calm environment. With its perfect release date, it's a great game to quarantine with. This installment puts you on a desert island getaway, with nothing but a tent of the base part of your island to explore. Tom Nook is back and glad to inhabit this island with you. The atmosphere is apparent immediately. With an island warming party and some basic starter tasks, it gives you acquainted with collecting resources and shaking trees. The nighttime music and the sound effects get you right into the vacation mood. You quickly start the next day and begin your adventure. The game is now synced with your day-night cycle. The game runs in real time. This means when something says it'll be built tomorrow, it actually means the next fiscal day. New Horizons is ultimately a game about growing a community of villagers on an island and making it a home, complete with furniture, houses, museums, interesting characters, and wildlife, and eventually transforming the island at will into something bigger. Now, I've only had the game for about a week, and I can tell you I've already felt like I'm making true progress. This footage is quite a bit older from where I am currently at, but still shows you the options available in the early game. You start with very little, and the initial progress is slow, because the tools available to you are very limited, but after the first three actual days of time, much more will open up. What do I mean by this is that in order to explore the rest of the island, other than the base part, you have to unlock the vaulting pole and the ladder. The vaulting pole is used to go across the water to the other sections of the island before you're able to build a bridge. It's only unlocked after you get blathers to come to your island. You do this by donating five fish and bugs to Tom Nook, and in this process, you also unlock the recipe for an axe, which is critical for gathering wood from trees and stone, clay, iron from rocks. You will be asked to set up a spot for Blathers. It will take another day before he moves in, and then he'll give you the recipe for a vaulting pole, which you can then craft and go over to the other parts of the island. The ladder, which you can also get, uh, get to unless you have the ladder, and is locked until Nook gives you that about five days later or so, and only after completing a bunch of other uh, objectives. There are important progression steps that you can overlook if you're not aware. You need to pay off your initial loans in order to access paying for things with the new Miles program, and then you need to buy a house, wait a day, and then you can access the Nook Miles Plus items from the shop. The Miles Plus unlock allows you to buy tickets and other goods. It's a checklist progression system for a little while. Certain things only unlock after other objectives have been completed, but not directly one after the other. I'm at a point now where I don't need this checklist anymore since I've gotten the town hall. It's free flowing in terms of how I progress. And Animal Crossing is such a free game that it's a shame the first week or so is gated by a very linear-like progression system. It's fun and it's not a bad system, but it's very noticeably linear until you get to the town hall and you can easily miss stuff if you're not paying attention. I'm talking about the progression before talking about the game because the progression is what most people find fun and the bulk of the good experience along with the customization. The name of the game is really going through the progression steps and then customizing and creating your own town. There are so many options for customizing everything that's pretty crazy. There's a pro editor that you can unlock on your Nook phone that allows you to make custom designs and share them with other people as well as wear other people's custom designs. You can make some fantastic designs with this as we'll show in a little bit. There's then there's the thousands of customizable items to decorate your house and surroundings with. Some of them work and some of them don't work for some reason. I wish I'd really tell you which ones worked before you bought them. For instance, the popcorn machine that I have actually kind of pop popcorn, but the uh, electric scooter that I bought doesn't actually work or move. Similar to some other items. It'd be nice uh, if they did, but I really can't expect them to. Um, a lot of the items you get when unlocked. Uh, you can unlock through like building the town hall, so your selection will be pretty limited until them to like Nook's Cranny and the recipes you get from villagers. Then there's the villagers and their housing. As part of the introduction arc as I'm really calling it, you get to place three villager housing placeholders and deposit furniture into the boxes. They will then use this to decorate their houses and eventually move into the island. They will be randomized villagers unless you talk to them earlier when you were on mystery islands. These three mark the start of your town, which will also grow as you complete objectives. You gain more villagers by creating the campsite, and every so often a new face will appear. It's your job to convince them to stay on the island, and of course you'll have to create a spot for them to stay. Talking to Tom Nook will allow you to select the sell some land, and for a $10,000 fee, he'll give you a kit to mark down where you want the villagers to be housed. If you can convince them to move in from the campsite, they'll be located at their new house in a couple of days. These houses will then match the villagers' personality or quirk. This creates some wild results, as you can see with Julian here. Uh, unfortunately, 
unfortunately, the first three villagers or so that you get, the two on your base party and one or two uh, after the fact, don't get their homes personalized, unfortunately, and they don't evolve past like a basic house without any personalization elements. This was found out recently, actually, by the Polygon article right here, so that's uh, important to know. That really brings me nicely into the progression and achievement system. Nook models are pretty much points that can go towards anything at the Nook ATM shop, from shoes, clothes, songs, furniture, paintings, and various tickets, and expand once you have a town hall. You get Nook models for doing pretty much anything on the island, including but not limited to breaking walks, collecting garbage, fishing, crafting, talking to people, catching bugs, enslaving villagers, getting Nook models, digging holes, hitting rocks with a metal stick, chopping trees, helping Gulliver get back on his ship for the 200th time, planting trees, watering flowers, giving gifts to uh, villagers, and more. It's a very nice way to keep you busy on the island and doing work. The Miles Plus portion, which unlocks after you upgrade to a house, allows you extra special daily rewards for doing everyday things. The rewards give you double miles and sometimes five times the amount of miles you would normally get from a normal achievement. Of the items you can spend your miles on, a Nook Miles ticket is a very good option. First, you want to get the storage upgrade and the better tools upgrade. Storage upgrade gives you that third and fourth row of inventory space that you will desperately need. The tickets will allow you to travel to a randomly generated island for collecting resources. Uh, you can not only collect rare valuables like bamboo, more iron, but you can also get new fish and insects that you couldn't normally get on your island anyway. This is especially useful for when you, on your first couple of days, run out of resources because you can only go to certain parts of your island. This is great for collecting more of those resources. Tickets are also a great way to explore new environments if you don't have friends to visit islands with. you also be visiting playthroughs a lot. Uh, to give them fossils, you find and donate new stuff to the museum, which is one of the best places in the game. It's unlocked by giving Blathers 15 unique species of bug and fish, and he'll then begin construction of the museum, which was where his tent would be. It's a huge collection of all your fish, fossils, and insects that you can donate to him, and he'll give you a little dialogue about it, and you're like, oh, we don't have it, and then you can give it to him, and it'll be placed in your museum. It's the crying achievement whenever you get it finished. That's another reason to visit these mystery islands, if you can get fish and bugs you couldn't otherwise, and donate them to the museum. The new crafting system. Pretty much you can get in your recipe from many sources and they allow you to craft items like tools, medicine, bait, decoratives, all that stuff. One of the first recipes you can actually buy is the pretty good tool set, which you get from the Nook ATM after paying off your initial loan and getting a house. You can unlock this and for 3,000 Nook miles you get the ability to get stone tools that break less often than the flimsy ones. Some of these recipes that you can get from the Nook ATM are exclusive, like fences and other variety items that only unlock after you upgrade your resident services. Some recipes are actually given to you through villagers or through general island progression from Tom Nook early on. Things like the shovel, the axe recipe, things in message balls that you can find on the shore, that kind of stuff. Uh, bottles will give you random recipes as well. The new crafting system means you're actually going to be chopping wood, collecting stone, iron, clay, and all that stuff quite a bit, so there's a reason to come back every day and collect a bunch of resources, sell a bunch of things, and just get more recipes. It's a nice addition that makes it so that you can craft a lot of the items instead of having to buy them, and it makes things feel more personal. The caveat to that is that since you can craft them, they can also break, tools-wise. The base tools you can craft at the start break very quickly, so get the pretty good tools upgrade from the Nook ATM after upgrading to a house, it is very useful. But be warned, you will not be able to get better tools than these for a long time. Most of the golden tools as of recording, the community actually don't know how to obtain them yet, and other resources are locked off for now. That's important to know. Animal Crossing is a game where the content spans over a year or so. There's stuff we don't know even about with time traveling because certain events and content updates only come out on Nintendo's clock. Certain buildings will only be unlocked after a certain update, and some content is for now unknown to us. There's 383 villagers in the game confirmed, and at max we have not seen all of them yet. Things will unlock as time goes on. Now one of the two big things to consider when buying this game. If you have other people in the house, there's only one island per console. That means that the others that will join will be able to join your island only. This shouldn't be an issue or won't be an issue, and while other people are mad at it, the subsequent problems are much worse. The game only gives priority play to the first person, meaning any major progression is locked to that person. No bridges can be built, no houses, and the recipes and tools given to the first player are locked to the first player, meaning that player 2, 3, and 4 will need to piggyback off of player 1, requiring them to go into their account, make tools, and give them to the other players for like recipes and tools that they don't get shared. This also means that the iron only generates the same amount of wood, trees, and stones that would be there if other people weren't there, so the rest resources become more scarce. I do agree that Nintendo should patch the recipes and tool progression issue. It does inhibit play and enjoyment for the second or the third player. Especially if the first player isn't as engaged in the game as the other players are, it hinders, uh, they're hindered by player one's game progression. The other big thing is multiplayer. While local co-op is a thing, it's very limited. The leader is selected, and the other people are followers. The followers can't do anything except select the tools by just cycling through them, and the camera follows the leader, and so they have prior 
priority control over everything, including their inventory. So it's pretty useless. And then there's local multiplayer, which is better. You can add people to your best friends list and allow them to edit your island, travel on there. And while I haven't tested it, other reviewers have said it works much better and there isn't a problem. And then there's wireless multiplayer, which works as you would expect. You can go to other people's islands and you can't mess around or edit them, but you can like explore them, look at them, go through stuff. That. As for a verdict, if you want the game, you already have it, as I and many other people already do. If you're new to the series and are not sure about it, this is the best game for a relaxing and fun like town life sim type of thing. It reminds me a lot of Minecraft and the customizability and like free flow of it all. My time at Portius or the create recipe, craft, uh, do a whole thing for a town. It's nice, fun, relaxing, a lot of stuff to do and it's a really good sense of progression. Even if it is a little slow to start and restrictive in some of the multiplayer aspects, it's a great game and while I know many people love it including me. Uh, I was also skeptical about how much fun I'd have doing a game that many people call nothing and isn't fun and what do you do you don't do anything i think it's a fun game and i hope a bunch of people pick it up under my recommendation